Okay, great. So now we're recording and I'll turn over to you, Arjun, to introduce your team and your topic and let's take it from there. So my name is Arjun Bingley. I'm a data science student. Uh, I graduated this May, so this is my capstone project, part of my capstone project. But we want to take it further than just the capstone project. That's why we decided to uh, these are my teammates that I can try. Right. What might help actually is since you're presenting off that computer, I'll mute here and you unmute there. Okay. So pick That's up your I'm voice saying. better. Yeah, so people are trying to speak. Can, can we ask how everyone is listening to us? Thumbs up if you can hear as well. Thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> okay. So I'm Sanjit Vijay and I'm in my last semester right now and I'm also contributing to this project. And now we are taking it further than our capstone project. It's much more than that. And it's uh, it's something that is that everyone wants to talk about, everyone wants to work on, but it's like implementation is difficult. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to ease the thing and making uh, the uh, power of LLM reach everyone basically. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Kunal Ingunkar. I'm also from Data Sense and I'm uh, also graduating this May. So I worked on this project for passing uh, various PDF documents and uh, worked on its uh, GUI front end. Hi, my name is Erica. My profession is I'm a social scientist, but I'm also in the data science program. Uh, if you have any questions at any point, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Does it matter what it is? If anything's hard to understand, because this is the first time we're really presenting um, this project. So please ask any questions you have. Okay, let's go. So we first go over what is RAG, and then we uh, explain what our package is about, the demo, and then show you how we run it. So first of all, what is RAG? So I'd like to motivate this in the sense that, you know, everyone uses ChatGPT, uh, but assume you are in a hospital and you want to use ChatGPT to, uh, to query about your patients, right? Now you cannot have your patient records given to OpenAI for training the model or any other LLM for that instance, because they're sensitive information. You don't want it out there. So what's the solution you can do? You can either, again, Take your own, uh, download an open source LLM, fine tune it with your patient records. But that is really expensive. And you know you cannot expect to have the same patients by the time you roll out the model. You know, you have new patients, patients leave, and you want to keep the model as relevant as possible. For that, the best option so far we have is retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Uh, so advantages of RAG is that you can make it very domain specific without training. It injects context based on your query to the prompt. So uh, it increases accuracy, reduces hallucination, many benefits. But uh, the pain point is the implementation. Though there are already a lot of modules to, a lot of packages available to implement it, it's not very straightforward. The choices you make are not very explicit. So this is what we try to do. Uh, for example, right, like we, I asked ChatGPT, what, where can I eat on GW campus? Though it has all the information, technically, it still doesn't give you best answer. You ask any GW students, I don't think they would agree with the kind of answers it gave. So this is, again, you, it's not just the training part, I feel, because it's trained on such a vast domain, it doesn't know exactly from what point you're asking. So this is the pipeline, the general pipeline for RAG, right? You have your document sources, you somehow process them, you make embeddings out of it. So sentence embeddings, a fixed length embedding. You store them in a vector database. So that's what data ingestion look like. Uh, you have new data, you can just run this pipe. You don't have to do any fine tuning. And how it works is when the user asks a question, it does a similarity search over the vector database. The easy way to think about similarity search to me is uh, do not be very mathematical. If you have a scale of goodness and badness and you want to get something good, you go to that point in line and look at what's nearest to you. Similar thing is done in a higher dimensional space. Uh, with, 
uh, dot product or cosine similarity. So you, so with the similarity search, you get the most similar uh, documents or chunks of documents that to the query, and you inject that to the prompt and ask the LLM, and you get a query. Like you get the answer out. So that's how the basic RAG pipeline works. Now, uh, to why not use existing tools and why use our package? I'll let Sanchez. Uh, so everyone earlier was talking about ChatGPT. It is very good. It aids our life a lot. But at the end, we cannot expect everything from ChatGPT. Uh, as my teammate explained, hospital data or the other example of GW campus. So ChatGPT doesn't update. But uh, let's say you have a new data. You want to do a literature review. You have like 15 to 20 research papers, but you cannot put those research paper into chat GPT because it has a limit. You cannot just give it all the research paper. So what you can do is you can pay open AI thousands of dollars, get your own LLM, fine tune your own LLM on those papers and ask. But again, that is very costly thing. Better way is use this package, Grag, where you don't have to pay anything. It's just like, uh, it is cost effective. You just have to uh, get the get your own LLM, ingest your data and simply query it. So get your 15, 20 research papers and you want to ask all those, let's say all those 15 to 20 research papers are about quantum computing. Now there is similarity in all those research papers. Now you want an answer that takes context from all the research paper, any question from quantum computing or anything. Now this package, what this will do is it will query the database and it's gonna give you context from all the research papers and you will get the output. Now, uh, if you want to, uh, as I said, you can pay thousands of dollars to a lot of APIs available, but again, that is not a cost effective thing to do for your day-to-day -day work. You cannot keep paying APIs for every research or every project you are doing. And uh, the best part about this is, this is an end-to-end -end solution. Just get your data, choose your LLM. You don't have to do anything, just choose it. We will give it to you, we'll quantize it for you, everything. And at the end, just ask question, whatever you want from your data, get your answer sorted like that. Yeah, uh, so just to reiterate, so we get bring up the demo. So okay. Our package not only handles RAG, but given say any, most of the open source models we can run, uh, on our package. So you just give it the name, it downloads it from Hugging Face and does the quantization for you. Even that pipeline is very simplified using this uh, package. So here we have a small demo to show it in working. Uh, with, we designed the GUI for it, small GUI, and we have ingested the US constitution here. So you can ask any question regarding the constitution and it should give you a good answer. Currently we have three models that we downloaded and that this is a long until 13 billion. It's a kind of open source model. I wouldn't say it's completely open source because you still need authorization to download it, but they usually give it. Uh, and we have different settings here. We have a temperature setting. Temperature to me is like creativity of the model. So uh, mathematically, it it is how the last token is sampled from the probability distribution given by the model. So we set it really low. In theory, it should not hallucinate as much when it's high. And the top K here is how many of the chunks of the documents we ingested, which is the constitution here, should the LLM get for answering your query? So here we set it to a nominal three value and uh, we can just go for one of the questions. Uh, let's do a couple. And then if anyone in the audience wants to test it out, we can yep. do that. Uh, what are the... Uh say details of the first amendment. It's... It just got that <laughs> mm -hmm. Easy, man. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That works? Yeah, so, okay. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I hope uh, this is <laughs> the right hand. It's actually told all of the events. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we didn't put a lot of effort into fine tuning it in sure. terms of context, chunk sizing, uh, and all that. So 
Uh, it also displays the sources. Maybe you can show one of the sources. That's useful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is the raw chunk. So probably got it from here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You can ask it a little more detailed question. Maybe? Yeah, let's ask a more detailed question. Like, uh, I feel like ChatGPT would probably be able to answer all oh, of yes. the, yes. uh, the Constitution, yes. but, but still, I'm trying to think of something that's so detailed, maybe it gets it wrong. And it's a 30 million model. It's, it's, it's not a big model. Um, yeah, I didn't measure it. It's not my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It is in Article 5. Right. Yes, yeah, sounds right. <laughs> it's not sound right. Oh, so yeah. we can switch to bigger models. We can switch models to Mixtral. Mixtral. Oh, Mixtral is another. Is it running locally? Yep. Yeah, it's locally. Yes. Locally, in the sense, we have an AWS instance. Um, oh, of, so it's, of, it's of running on the cloud, not running locally. Uh, okay. Yeah. But it can. It can. Yeah. Though we do all our testing and development there, so we just run up there. Yeah. This is actually a very huge model as compared to last model. So that was like 13 billion model. It has 13 billion parameters. This has eight times 7 billion parameters. This model is actually very huge, but best part is it is it is called mixtural because it is mixture of experts. Mm -hmm. So it has like eight feet forward layers it only uses two out of them with weighted averaging for the best accuracy, for the like best uh, highest probability of solution. So that's why, even though it is very huge model, but it runs on very small resources. And these are not raw models too, they are quantized. So uh, the huge floating point weights have been shrunk down to, uh, this one is uh, Q4, Q4, KM. Q4, right? So four bit integer values. Uh, for for us to be able to run these models locally. Uh, else you would need like an array of GPUs to run. But it doesn't uh, cause a huge loss in terms of accuracy when you quantize these models. The best part is quantizing them is not like tough. We have given a module. You just have to put one line, give it. You don't even have to download the module. Just say, we will download the module for you name the module that you want from the, we have provided link from where you can find mod, all the models, all the large language models. Just name, we will download it for you, we'll quantize it for you according to your uh, resources yeah. you specified. So it's well, just that. Loading, can you show some of the, like... Yeah, that show the code books. Is, is it a, uh, like the package? I just, can you see the package and like how you might implement this if you wanted to go through that process? Yeah. yeah. Like download it and... Well, you have the documentation. Set up your own. And download it? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it like hip install jeans, right? G bag with this one's branch. What we actually do in this group is like show how live demos don't work. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> like every other week, we're like, all right, I swear this worked at home, and then we try it. And like, hey, guys, it's relatable. And this oh, is okay. every time we meet our professor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can you, okay, probably just the so uh, Docker one actually ran though that one time. That was kind of cool. Um, well, can you okay. probably just uh, switch branch and uh, just download the file on the computer? Or, or you can join the Zoom and you can share your screen. Sure. I don't have anything else. Okay. It's a cool idea. Um, I especially like the fact that I don't have to like. Like I, I theoretically could run it locally. I, I could imagine like this could be something that we maybe have set up with mm -hmm. with the high performance computing folks. I don't know. But we, this is a single A10 GPU, and we use like half of the memory for running, say, the 13 billion model. A1. Not A1, A110. So it's like what 20 gigs. It is. Yeah. This is the this yeah, is our GPU. Utilization. Yep. Right now it is uh, loading the Five database, gigs. yeah. And once the model loads, you will see it will spike up, but still mm -hmm. it it won't go out of memory. It's it's still possible for a consumer to run. Is the point? Yeah. And you can do much 
larger quantizations to make it See, even the, smaller. This is the spike the model is running. Yeah. And this is a yeah, this is the largest model we have. Yeah, we have a model ready. So you can ask questions, detailed questions. Yeah, ask a question. So that whole that whole link was just loading the loading model. the model. Yes. Okay. Yep. Now we can start correcting. Okay. Yes. Ask it a question. Uh, <laughs> oh, any any questions? Ask questions. We want to see your code. Okay. I want to see the yeah, like how would I set this up? So, yeah. Like how yep. would I use yeah. the package to yes, yes. to make my own lit review bot or something? Let's just go to the cookbooks. Cookbook, yeah. 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 Uh, what is best to show the document? We have a documentation already. Like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So let me join the Zoom to see if we can just share uh, screen. Right? screen. Yeah. Can share this. I don't have any more questions. Uh, I'm trying to think of something yeah. that trip yeah. it up, and I'm like, sure, test them. Uh, I don't know. We wanted to load like something that people would know or ask for, but we also know. asked it like some some basic question that I don't know about. Like, can I consider what is a gun? Is like, like a generic question like that, and then you would have to figure out that like we need to go to GW or GW, maybe have some GW folder litigation over that. That's a good question. Like. Something like that, because like, if I was trying to figure out, do I have the constitutional right to do that? Mm -hmm. I could ask it that, and then mm -hmm. I ask it like, okay, well, tell me where and when, where are the boundaries of that, and mm -hmm. does it know more than just the constitution? Like, is it able to retrieve, let's say, other recent court cases and legislation that's like, yep. yeah, if you have the data, it should be in theory, it should be recording in progress. Yeah. Trying to think of something controversial that that tends to be. All shoot all your ideas and your questions because we're open source over here. Yep, yeah, the preview bot version of this would be pretty, pretty nice. Uh, so, so the, the documentation in front of I can go straight to the cookbooks to see how. Let's see. Let's talk to you. So, that's as simple as it gets. You Start your client, which is your vector database. Uh, this is just a collection name, the name of the data uh, table in Nest World, right? Uh, and then you have the retriever, which is just the retrieval part. It gets the query and it has the case to write. We can explain what an adoption is, and that's it, this query, uh, you get your output. Uh, in terms of this is shared. We can also show you how the ingestion works, right? Uh, we support so asynchronous, asynchronous and synchronous, synchronous in, uh, ingestion because synchronous takes a while. Asynchronous is really fast. We just give you the path to the directory where we have currently, have currently we support PDFs, PDFs uh, including OCR, non OCR, tables, uh, whatnot, right? Nested tables. Yes. <laughs> Whatever, Whatever you can pass, pass the directory of the, of the which, which contains the PDFs. PDFs and just run uh, retriever dot ingest ingest and then should parse, parse the documents, documents it, it chunks, chunks it and then, and then uh, uh, add to your so, 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 so there's an echo mm -hmm. yeah. 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 my bad is it okay better or not? yeah yeah are we good now oh uh, we have prompts set up for different models. So another thing I feel online many people overlook is the way to prompt a model is different from model to model based on how it is trained. For Llama 2, it requires something called a sysprompt. So the, you, the, the instruction you provide in the sysprompt, it will try not to break it. But whatever comes after, it takes the liberty to do so. So if you have specific requirement, you have to put it in the sysprompt not in the usual body of the prompt. Uh, so those things we have taken care for popular models, uh, but if the user still wants to give a new prompt, they can do it through the custom prompt. Uh, we also support few shot prompting. Few shot as in, let's say you want your, uh, you're writing a code or you're writing a mathematical equations and reasoning, and you want your model to output only equations. 
you can give it explicitly that we want, we are giving you this question and we just want equations. We don't want any theory. So you can give it a couple of examples, then your model will follow those few shots and it will give exactly the solution you want. So that's what many of these models do too. For example, a co-pilot, right? How co-pilot is, uh, they do fine tuning too, obviously, but it's mostly few shot prompting uh, where they give a question and an expected answer and such such example so that the model knows what they expect from uh, the model. So, uh, I assume this would work just as well with code bases. Like if I wanted to write something in some specific JavaScript package, yes, like yep, the entire works. documentation of this mm -hmm. yes. thing I'm working in now, let's just stay here. Yeah, yeah. it's your own personal assistant. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, you don't have a chain, right? Um, hold on. It's fine. So usually we demonstrated a stuff chain. So like assume that the retriever got you three chunks. It just concatenates the three chunk along in the prompt and gives the whole thing. This is problematic when your chunk size is big because the LLM has a tendency to forget what's in the middle. Uh, another solution for that is something called a refine chain. What this does is it takes the three chunks, but only gives the first chunk along with your question, asks, asks for an answer, takes that answer gives the second question and ask it to refine the answer if you find something better here and keeps doing this. Downside is you call the LLM multiple times, uh, but if you're running it locally, it's not big of, it's not a big cost. But again, if it's an API, you're charged per call and per uh, content. Token, so, you charge per token. so that's another one. We are also trying to implement something called a map reduce. So it gives all the chunk independently to the model gets all the answers, and then that, that's the refinement process. Because here, the problem is, depending on the order of the context, the answer will be different. Though we order it based on uh, the similarity score the retriever gives you, it's still problematic in a sense. So, uh, yep. We can also show you how the LLM works. works, right? So if you want to run it directly from Hugging Face, you can give a link and it'll download from Hugging Face. But the better option we realized was we use Llama CPP, which is C implementation to run Llama. Uh, but now it supports a huge uh, library of models. So you run our file, which is uh, this one line quantize. Yeah. And then it's an interactive shell script. So it'll ask you the path where you want to clone the repo and the model path. So if you have already downloaded the model, you can give that model path. Or you can go to Hugging Face and find out the raw model uh, repo ID. Basically, that. every uh, LLM that is open source is available on Hugging Hugging Face. Face. Mm -hmm. So you give it that, it downloads the model, and then it will ask you, what quantization should I do? Uh, there are multiple options, but we recommend Q5KM and Q4KM. They depend uh, better on machines, machines like, machines like this. Machines. Uh, and also, they don't have a huge loss in terms of accuracy. And that's within three steps, you get your model quantized, mm -hmm. and now you can use it uh, in all the application. Uh, any doubts, suggestions? Yep, please. Uh, I came in late, so I don't really know the full context oh, of what's no. going on. And I also don't mean for my question to be too esoteric, but oh. like, what does GRAG have over other big projects like Langchain? So, right, oh. we use Langchain at the back end, right? We want to not do it. So we've written the package in a sense that for initial deployment, we can use Langchain and we can probably not, right? Uh, but the idea is in Langchain, if you want to do RAG, uh, it takes way more than three lines to get it running. You have to. Now, another issue I have with Langchain is uh, now they have started implementing LECL, uh, which is their way of chaining things. It is not very Pythonic to me. So it's very hard for Python users, new users to get going with Langchain. It's like language uh, language chain for uh, language expression, lang Langchain expression language. And yeah. as hard as it is to say, it is <laughs> more harder, to, <laughs> more hard to implement because it takes from Java yeah. and not everyone is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> don't, no one wants to go to Java, we you know. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Like if you want to see our source code, right? We use a lot of, um, so, for example, a retriever, 
is directly offline chain actually for now does LangChain yep. also have a GUI interface version that you can kind of work with, or is this sort of a uh, another novel thing? Here? There is LangSmith, but uh, it's not well supported. That's under production right now, so it's. I, I really like the like one thing you're doing here is making this just much more accessible to people mm -hmm. who who don't have to have no no LangChain and all the ins and outs of it. So yep. let's set up its own custom chatbot, and especially the GUI, the GUI interface is just nice if you are. Let's say a student trying to do a lit review. You've got all these papers and you want to ask yes. some sort of synthesized question. Like, um, it's a barrier right now, I think, to getting like non-data or CS type yes. people to want to yeah. use that. And this is this was that. Was that was the main motivation behind the, the project. project. Like yep. make it easy mm -hmm. so that people can try it, know what's it good for, uh, and do it. Like if we are not doing something impossible, Langchain does it as you said. Uh, there are other packages like Llama Index that does it. There are a lot of APIs. There's yes. together, there's Copilot, a lot of APIs yes, available, yes, but they charge you for each and everything. This is no charge. And and you don't have control over a lot of things. Yep. So for an industrial setting or production setting, I don't see that that granular control is important to me, to, to them, but mm. for a normal person, that granular control gets very hard. We are trying to make that more accessible here. Uh, we have a lot of challenges too, right? Main one I would say was parsing PDFs. <laughs> People would think that parsing PDF should be, you know, just plug and play, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, tables, tables in tables. Master tables are like a equations. Yeah. yeah, equations. PDFs can be in any format. Yeah, and Captions. if so. the extraction is not correct, you cannot expect anything from the model. So. Uh, we came across this package called Unstructured I.O., which tries to handle everything in one go, but sadly it doesn't. So we have we have implemented the sort of brute force method where it looks, we use a PDF, PDF plumber, plumber and uh, they worked on this actually, uh, uh, and like try everything and see what's the best result and use that. Do you have other input formats like just raw text or JSON? For, raw text you can, right? But for now, uh, we don't support direct document ingestion. Uh, just a team of four, we're trying to, <laughs> we want more collaborators on this project. We're trying to get them on board, but uh, but it should be the same. Like we show an example so that if people are ready to contribute, they get the sort of ethos of what we're trying to do and they can implement it in other formats. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, PDF should be the hardest one. Yes. Every raw text should be. Should be easier yeah. so that we chose PDFs. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. Uh, and the other challenge was again quantizing the model and all that. But we found a good package called Llama CPP that does it. Uh, though their documentation is really hard to follow, <laughs> mm -hmm. so we wanted to boil it down. And that's why we have an interactive script to do it. There is Hugging Face. You can just go to Hugging Face, load the model, do everything, just like Langchain. But Hugging Face, their code base is not that supportive, not that interactive, and very difficult to handle. You have only limited options. You can only do Q4 quantization or Q8 quantization. So either you will be, you will have to spend a lot of money on resources or you will have a bad result. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, there is mm -hmm. nothing in the middle. So you need to have something in the middle. For that, there is Llama CPP. You can run your local models locally on your machine with the ease of not spending large amount on for buying resources like that. Mm -hmm. Another significant challenge we are still facing is evaluation, right? Yeah. Like you can implement RAG, uh, but there are no straightforward evaluation metrics to test if something is going wrong. Uh, you Traditionally, people used uh, complexity, complexity, complexity uh, road measures. But to me, again, that doesn't make sense because they are designed for summarization and RAG is the opposite of summarization to me. If you summarize all the context I give you, then there's no point in me asking a question about it. I want a very specific answer. Uh, so that's still a challenge we are working on. There was a recent paper, uh, an implementation that Aris. came on called Ragus. Ragus. Uh, and they, uh, we are on the edge about this too. We have to test it, right? But they ask, depending on the answer you get from Rag, they, 
dissect it and ask multiple questions to the LLM to make sure that everything is correct. And they give a score. The reverse engineer, basically. Yes. The question and answer, the reverse engineer, they match. If the question you asked and the answer you got, if you reverse engineer the answer, will you be able to get the question back? Mm -hmm. That's how they yeah. uh, evaluate. But for that, they uh, basically, they use this open AI GPT-4. So basically they use SWOT to sharpen the knife. Right. Like to so me, that's again like spending trust? money. So, so that's another issue we have. Uh, so if you look at this, right, this is one of their metric. Break down the answer into individual statements. So they ask the LLM to do that. They get individual statements out. And then they ask the LLM again for each generated statement, verify that it's inferred from the given context. So yes or no, uh, like uh, NLI. Mm -hmm. And then based on the score the LLM gives you, it gives you the answer. Problems I have here is we know that LLMs have an inherent bias. How is that inherent bias affecting these metrics, right? But the good thing they have is all their metrics have direct actionable changes associated. So if, if you, you know that if one of their metric goes down, you know, okay, maybe I should chunk smaller. Uh, so that's the upside I give them. Uh, we want to implement this and also use it to fine tune our process, right? Uh, so, but evaluation is a big challenge. Uh, and the other thing we are working on right now, which is part of our research project, is the G in graph comes from graph. Graph. Uh, so, so that's where it started. Uh, so we want to remove the retriever part. Uh, can you show the pipeline? Right here. I have to show you. Yeah, you have. You have it. I have to stop. You got it. Eventually okay. stops. Oh, yep. Just stop sharing. Uh, so if you remember the pipeline we showed you, there's a vector database and there's a retriever there that queries the vector database. This yeah. querying process is done by something called cosine similarity, dot product, mm -hmm. right? So it directly depends on the kind of embeddings you have. Yeah. But our idea is to remove this retriever part and vector db part and use a graph neural net to do find the most similar chunks. Uh, the main issue we face is that, for example, you have a table, right, of uh, say financial transactions or you're using uh, say quarterly reports of a company and you want to ask it what was the profit for uh, the whole year, for example. Uh, your numbers don't have the word profit on it. It's just a heading on the table. So how does how does the vector DB know that, okay, they are similar, they are required. Uh, there's no way from cosine similarity to get those mm -hmm. information. So our idea is to use these chunks as nodes in a graph, train a graph neural network to connect them and use that graph to uh, take place of the vector DB and do the similarity search. We are actively working on it. Uh, no progress so far. <laughs> uh, because that's another ball game. You have graph neural nets. You have to train them. But uh, I think it's a really good area of research right now. Uh, and there is a ray of hope here. So ray of hope. It's not right. like it's dead end. There is no dead end here. Yes. We can do things. We have to experiment a lot. It is just that we can work only like six, seven hours a day. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yes, uh, and we graduate. Is the capstone from... for one of their courses? Or... So yeah. for our degree program, we have to what? fulfill a capstone project okay. in the last semester. degree program in data science. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we took up. Which this... of the data science programs is it this? Because the university has many. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's the whole idea of our project. Another question about RAG in general. Like, so mm -hmm. let's say you've got your constitution expert bot mm -hmm. and then i ask it something completely unrelated to the constitution you can right like now. but <laughs> is there a way to know how much of the response is coming from the context or how it's just, much it's just getting it from at that point like if i say what's your favorite <laughs> ice cream let's ask <laughs> and, it, and then it has nothing to do it'd be nice if it would be able to tell me that well like well yes i'm not using the constitution for this one um, this is just me i'm just using the model again yes. at this point i could just use ChatGPT. so there are two ways to <laughs> attack this problem right one is to give strict prompting yeah but you cannot be sure that how strict is it uh sure but the that's why i said ragas right they do this they do that to, to set validation yes. to kind of test it so 
to you yeah. could use that and display that score to the user saying that that's what I really would want to know is, is yeah. like I want to have some sort of confidence mm -hmm. that like maybe I maybe like I, I have a hundred papers I don't know what's in the paper yeah. I'm, I'm brand new to a field I'm trying yeah. to understand I'm asking a question that actually is outside the field but I don't know it mm -hmm. it'd be great if you could tell me well there was no we didn't find anything that matched well yeah. I'm still going to give you an answer because it's coming from the, the LLM but mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing's come, or like, yes, here's, I guess you do have the sources that pop up. Yep. So that gives me That'd some confidence, like, this is where it's coming from. But yeah. I would, I, that would be a really nice addition to okay. know how, what portion of this is really coming from real context, or it's just, it doesn't know, so it's just, it's going to give me something. Yes. In theory, oh. graph should also, like, help it should work that. well. Yes. It should map back to something. Like, yeah. Oh. But I've really confused it with the ice cream, apparently. It was a big <laughs> 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 Uh, but there are many ways traditionally how the attack is a strict prompting and they yeah. have guardrails to check. So they, uh, how, for example, uh, what was that a rag pipeline? I think Microsoft rag pipeline. The, what they do is they do another similarity search from the context and the reply. Mm -hmm. And if that similarity search is below a threshold, they just don't pass it to the user. They just say, yeah, so, no, no. right. Uh, another one is to run the model multiple times, look at the perplexity score. If it is not from the context, the variation in the perplexity <laughs> score is going to come. Where's the source? Can we see the source? <laughs> Which article? <laughs> That's article seven. No, I'm sure. Um, Switch it to Lama. Sure, it's going to try, it's going to try, right? Yes. Yeah. So another is perplexity score. If there's high variation in the perplexity score for the same prompt, yes. you know that it's probably hallucinating. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's another check uh, yeah. you can do. This is, I mean, this is just a bigger problem, I think, in general, <laughs> LLMs. It'd be, it'd be so nice if we had some sort of measure of check. confidence that this is hallucinating or not. And I gotta believe that there's progress. But like these kinds of things are, I feel mm -hmm. like getting closer to that. And, yes. Um, but that said, the, the, the sort of hallucination you said is yeah. much easier to catch. Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what if it's getting the context, but it is understanding the context in a very biased manner, yeah. and then is answering? That becomes yeah. a much harder thing to catch uh, with these yeah. simple measures. Uh, so that's why we are, so for in our project, we made sure to use everything open source, uh, including our vector databases, models to the extent we could, uh, and everything open source because we believe that for this LLM uh, to be really useful, a company should uh, train their model on data that is open source and they should reveal what they're trained on so that we can infer from that what could the, be the bias. Uh, so far, most companies don't do it. Uh, even to date, we don't know what OpenAI trains their models on. They recently came with Sora, right? Mm -hmm. uh, video. We don't even know what sort of video is going to be trained on, which makes huge implication. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, let's see what's your favorite ice cream, right? Mm. So, in theory, if you have small enough chunk sizes, mm -hmm. okay. then it would report back what chunks it used. And it's only reporting mm -hmm. three. So, you could see from the chunks whether or not it was accurate. Mm -hmm. But it's Plus you're losing some of the purpose that you did the chunks small. Mm -hmm. small. So, like with Lama, Lama says. <laughs> Can we speak about that? <laughs> Lama is much more strict in following the prompt. Yeah. So, because of that, I believe it will tell you, try to at least tell you that. Okay, you know, I'm not. Okay. It's not going to be like rude and deny, I'm not going to answer that, but it will just. Do something, just give some answer but related. So, any other suggestions? Or, mm -hmm. We're also actively looking for contributors if you know any points. So, interested. the Jupyter AI library, which is open source, mm -hmm. and okay. uh, so it's available on GitHub, then was uh, contributed by. AWS people, folks from okay. AWS. It has okay. a RAG component okay. and it can ingest 
several types of files, mm -hmm. including Jupyter Notebooks and PDFs and JSON and various mm -hmm. others. So you could go in the code okay. of the Jupyter AI library and see if you can get some uh, ideas or borrow mm -hmm. some of the code according to you know, respecting whatever license they're giving it, put put on it. But maybe that will allow you to yes. expand to okay. other types of files because mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, uh, Jupyter AI uh, requires you to use one of the normal vendors for your embedding model or oh. your LLM. So okay. it is just a interface. Okay. To, uh, but it has the but but it provides the facilities for, uh reading the files okay. from a local directory and then it will use you can select the embedding model that you want to use and you can select the LLM that you want to use and then you have to give it an API and pay you know to the vendor whatever vendor that you use mm -hmm. open your eyes whatever um to create the embeddings the vector or whatever embedding so you know, use I don't know <laughs> what are you using for your embeddings so we support any embedding you want from Hugging Face, but currently it's using Instructor Excel. Yeah. Uh, in our benchmarks, we found that is the best performing one. But you could use sentence transformers or uh, whatever you want. But again, embeddings are very important for RAG because that's what you do mm -hmm. similarity search on. So if your embeddings are not good enough, you cannot get the best chunks out. Uh, the thing with these Instructor model is that it's not... Uh, it's sort of like a language model. You have to give it an instruction and what you want to embed, and then it gives you an embedding. Depending on the instruction too, the embedding changes. So if you're asking for a query, you say, this is a query for this, and then you ask, give the query, it embeds the query. But if it's a chunk you wanna uh, add to your database, you wanna say that, okay, I want this embedding for retrieval, and then it would do it. Mm. Oh. How does it change it? Like, hmm? What's the difference? Uh, again, right? Like uh, yeah. not too technically, but it's curious. Like, uh, I believe they have trained on multiple uh, sort of instructions. Mm -hmm. So depending on the instruction, it changes uh, the kind of space that you embed it to. So if it like a simple example could be that uh, you know in queries you have words like what is uh, or question marks. You don't want those things to affect your embedding much. If you want to get the correct, uh, to go to the correct space to to get the context out, right? So maybe those things is what the model does, uh, but uh, it could be n number of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good answer. It would be really nice to also be able to read HTML. Or, you know, one thing that <laughs> yeah. I uh, it would be really nice to have. Like if you think you know you have that example of the word go eat and mm -hmm. you know, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I've had this idea for a while. It would be really nice to have like our GW bot that knows mm -hmm. everything about GW. That yeah. Students can interact with yeah. that yeah. bot instead of trying to navigate registries, <laughs> office, <laughs> courses, schedule, yep. uh, you know, all the web pages that have all the things that you can And then you can do, but it's, it's, but, but it's not. Yes. What's the point? Like nothing is codified, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's like a zillion number of web pages. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, some of them are even mismatched. Like this site says this, and this page says this, and we're like, oh, what is it? <laughs> but no, I want that. Like I, I want that tool for sure. That'd be really wonderful. Um, it would be great, wouldn't it? That yeah. you have, uh, Imagine, you have like, all the knowledge of the web pages of GW Plus. Perhaps yeah. even all the syllabi that we can collect. International but, students and whether uh, I can take this class you know, or not. I mean, there's there. like just like so many questions that yeah, I don't know the answer to. Or you can even start building a database yeah. uh, out of contributions from students that you could say you have you can have an ingest kind of mechanism like uh, <laughs> give us your tips, you know. Yeah, yeah. Students can just contribute tips for various things and they can build a database of all the GW knowledge. Mm -hmm. And have a bot. So for my so for my Reddit, GW. Yeah, here's a GW Reddit. Are you giving advice like 
If you want to cheat on your tests, sign up for DSS services because they don't want you when they're cheating. Like, oh, yeah, we don't want to tell people that. <laughs> That's what you get on Reddit is that wow. how to, what class to take if you want to. And you just not go really... to DSS and say, hey, I want a DSS server and they just give it to you? Well, it's a little more complicated, but I not it was hard. like a it's serious pretty... checking behind the scenes. I mean, they trusted that system to be serious. Yeah, uh, with anxiety and stuff, it's it pretty easy. Yeah. Through. yeah. But yeah, you do have to have some documentation. But how was the advice? Like, you go, it was like someone just said it right uh, there on uh, Reddit. Uh, uh, she, oh, <laughs> this is how I cheated GW. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. And now I can cheat all this. You say, oh, that's not good. So. <laughs> oh, dear. But for yeah. my NLP project, what we I did was scrape uh, news articles, and you can ask it's like a mini rag for asking questions regarding a news article, whatever URL you put. So that is why I wanted to do PDF this time because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. web page scraping there are really good libraries. Yeah. I think it should be easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, forgive me, I shut up late, but are is one of the use cases that that GRAG enables the ability to bring in um, secure data or like research sensitive yes. data. Yes, yeah, yes. That was the idea, like everything, there's no, so how it started was, I was talking with Amir and he had a, uh, we were talking to an industry, person in the industry who works for government and they were implementing a RAG system. So I asked them, oh, what model are you using? They're like, open AI API. And I was like, Government. Yes, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. So wow. So, <laughs> out of every company, open AI is not somebody I want to send. Well, I mean, I think that they provide some sort of enterprise contracting that they don't. Pre pre no, no, no. That they don't. Special no. data and no. internally data goes to server, it's there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought the ChatGPT Enterprise, no? no? That kind of doesn't uh, send the data. Also, if they do it, they right? promise they're not going to use it. Yes. But, but they don't. There's no a legal it, consequence yeah. of right, them using it. Right. They promise we're not going to use your data. But it's still, you, they save it in their it's, servers and yeah. It's like it's not explicitly they're using data. Maybe they're like, let's say, you don't know. government asked some question and they got some response. They said this response is not good. So they know what response they give. They, they know it's not good. They can use it for reinforcement, reinforcement learning for the model. So they are not entirely using what they gave, but they are using their output and everything. Somehow it is yep. breach of privacy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some way it is. Another problem is even if they promise you, right? There's no way for us to verify if yep. they train a model on it. Like how can you you it's cannot infer box. the yeah. training data? It's not secure. You yep. cannot. It's yep. Yeah. So that's why we made sure that we are not going to use any API. We're going to run everything locally yeah. and make sure so, uh, that front at least is addressed. Mm -hmm. Good job. I'll stop the recording. Well done. Good job. Yeah.